Hi, uh, the idea of this video is to do a quick overview of some of the things you covered in um, intro to PLCs. Uh, what I've opened here is RS Logics 500. Um, what we're going to do is create a new file. There's a couple options. You could have done it the way I did it or clicked on the new tab up here. Um, in the new file settings, there's a few different things that, that can be done. And what I'll do is, is right on the screen here, you'll see that here it's listed as untitled. You can type in any name you want here. This is the name that the processor is going to have. So this is not the name of your program. This is the name of the PLC. If you had 10 PLCs on a network, each would need its own unique name and its own unique address. Um, what you see here are all the different kinds of processors available that this programming software works with. And then of course down here are all the communication settings. This is how we're going to talk. This is how we're going to talk to this processor and the processor is going to have this name is, is what the idea is here. Um, I'll clear that and show you how we set this up. Uh, I'll give it a name. We'll call it test1 and we'll all of the stuff we're using in the lab is Micrologix 1100 Series A, and we're communicating over Ethernet. That's um, RJ45 port. That's your Cat5 cable, you know, IP addresses. Um, so we'll leave it at the Ethernet, but I'll show you there would be a few different options. Every driver installed would, would show up here. Who Active is a way that you can choose where you want to talk. We're going to leave that now. I'll come back to that. So you would leave this on Ethernet, say OK and the software opens up. Um, we have a new program now. It defaults with Ladder 2 open. Um, I'll explain what Ladder 2 is in a second. Again, this is supposed to be a review. Um, if I open this up, you'll see here that um, what, I've, what I've slid over here is the project tree and all the stuff contained in this folder. Imagine it as, as basically a big block of memory and, and this whole block of memory is all of the PLC memory, sort of like a C drive in a computer. And they've divided it up into sections. And, and that's what you're looking at here. Like this is a section, this is a section, right? These are all folders. And then this stuff is files contained inside the folders. Like in the data files folder, you have all the data files. This is where all of the I.O and internal bits and timers and counter memory is stored and we reference this in our program. In program files is where ladder 2 exists, that's where your ladder logic goes. So um, in, in our case in the controller tab is all your controller properties. So this includes stuff like uh, processor type, communications type, channel config, setting up of the inputs and outputs, um, you know, processor faults and, and so on. Um, Next file available is program files. This is where all of your ladder logic exists. This is where all the program logic and the logic always starts with two and ends with two. So they give you this one as default. We'll add more in a later lab. Data files are simply how we, uh, where we store the information we're going to work with. And data files are referenced in the ladder logic. And uh, I mean, I'm sure it rings a bell, but I colon, I don't know, zero slash two. We're saying, input data file uh, word 0 bit 2 right or if I said b3 colon 0 slash 4 again binary data file word 0 bit 4 so this is and again this is just a way of referencing these data files the rest of this stuff like comments and so on will come back to in time if I have ladder 2 open so you click here on ladder 2 this is my ladder 2 that I'm looking at now um, what I'll do is expand it right over here in ladder 2 you can add rungs you can add contacts it's, it's really whatever you want so this contact now is going to reference somewhere in those data files I can choose what I want I'm gonna take an input word 0 bit 1 just just to pick something easy and we'll call that a I don't know button. Uh, here 
I'm going to turn on an output when the input's on, so I'll go 0 slash 0. So it's word 0, bit 0 of the outputs, and that might be a light. Of course, you should always comment everything as you go. And really what you're doing is you're assigning an address comment. So this address is always going to have this comment. Or I could go here and say just this instruction does. I'm going to leave it at address. So everywhere I use this address will have the word light associated with it. And you would keep going using timers and counters. Of course, you know, on timers you have time delay on, time delay off, retentive timers and, and resets. And they have associated bits in the data files such as um, DN, EN, you know, done, enable, timer timing, and so on. You reference those just by how you write your addresses. Um, some of the stuff I'd like to cover though is when you download, you can actually download two different ways. So I want to send this now to the PLC, which is called download. It's the opposite of, of the internet world. You can say here download. The problem is this is going to download the way your network settings were set up when you built this offline program. And they may not be right, and you may send it to the wrong place. In, in a factory that had 15 PLCs, downloading to the wrong place could mean you, you do a lot of damage or overwrite a program. The preferred way would be to use comms, system comms, come in here, and in here you can actually see all of the different things on our networks. You can say we're using Ethernet, and there's my PLC, and I would like to download specifically to it. I would give it a name, whatever the name was. I could I could change it here. Um, there's a different revision number, but that's not worth worrying about. This is an important message. What this is saying is the communications path or channel is set up differently between the offline program and the online program. And they're saying, do I want to apply this change, which means I'll be changing the way the PLC communicates online, or don't apply, leave it the way it is. Obviously, I'm talking to it now, so I like the way it's working. I'm going to not apply this, and I'd recommend, unless you intend to change it, choose don't apply here. And do I want to go online? Yes. I'm online. It's in program mode, meaning that the logic's not being scanned. You'll notice no green bars here. When I go online... Oh, I just went offline. All right, let me do it again. I'll go online. There. I meant to go run mode, I apologize. I say yes, I go into run mode. Why didn't it go into run mode? Ah, this raises an interesting point. There's also settings on the PLC that you can limit someone's ability to change the mode. So there. Uh, it's now in remote run. Um, someone had locked me out on the PLC. I can show you how to do that um, in, in lab class if you'd like. Um, and now what will happen is when I press the button, this wrong will become true. In other words, this data location, here I should open it up. Input zero, all right, that goes here. And output goes here. So what should happen is when I press the button, You'll see there's a 1 in the input data table, which makes this run true, so there's a 1 in the output data table. Again, simple review. I just want to make sure you're comfortable with what we're doing here. When you're done, you can choose to go offline. You can do online edits by changing it here. Again, I'm not going to get into the details of that a whole lot. Um, and, and lastly, whenever you're finished a program, you should always clear the processor memory. right? So you should come in. If you don't, someone would have access to your information. So you say, yes, I want to clear my processor information. I'm not going to save changes. This was just a test program. Now the processor memory has been cleared. The other thing I said I'd show you is you see down here there's something called RS Links. This is an all new piece of software to you. What this is, is running in the background whenever you have this software, um, RS Logix 500 open. This software is designed to communicate between Rockwell products. Um, so in here I can come in, I can set up all my different drivers, I can do this RS who, and it shows me everything on the network and how, it, how it's communicating and how it's set up. I can change settings, change IP addresses. When you say download, it's this software that's handling the downloads and the uploads. It's this software that does all the communications, but it does it in the background so you don't really see it. 
This is the screen that comes up when you go com system comms. It's using this software to do that. We'll talk about this software in more detail as we uh, as we move through the course. Um, hopefully this review gave you um, at least a, a, a bit of a head start on things and, and helps you get get your first couple labs going. We'll be doing future videos on each of the subjects as they pop up.